Okay. Um, so, got Unity Hub open. Um, just going to wait a second here. Just want to make sure everything's all set up. Hello, good morning, or good afternoon-ish, three minutes past noon. Uh, if anybody wants to follow along, now's a good time to crack open Unity. Um, a quick run through, we're going to be going over how to import um, Playmaker or how to like install Playmaker into Unity. And then we're going to go through that, uh, that running camera effects animation thing that you saw in the last video. <clears throat> um, let's see, what do we got? Two con concurrent viewers. Say what's up if you're in the chat. Say hello. Let me know you're there. Mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> um, so we'll get started in just a few minutes here. Everything's loaded up. I just want to give people a moment to get their shit together. Um, also, I uh, might be a little brain dead, just a, just a wee bit, uh, because the people across the street from me, or actually a couple houses down from me, were um, so kind to just uh, hire a whole gardening team to um, saw down all these branches from a huge tree this morning, which lasted about two hours, I think. Um, so I'm very well rested and, uh, very thankful for them. Okay. Let's see. Is this the simplified version? So I have a couple of scripts here. I'm pretty much going to be going off these scripts that I wrote, uh, just to kind of keep me in line, just to kind of act as like a, 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 maybe like a syllabus, just to kind of make sure I don't get too far off the rails here. Um... But uh, the thing is, I kind of have a really complicated version, and I have a simplified version. I think we're going to go with the simplified version. Okay. 12.06. I'll wait a couple more minutes. Say what's up in the chat. Say what's up. Say what's up. <clears throat> got a great comment this morning um, on uh, the FPS in eight hours video the one for super pop-up piss cleaner deluxe Brett Zakowski writes WTF was this is he act if he actually is coming off a breakup imagine his ex seeing this three crying laughing faces yeah <laughs> It was it was a bit of a uh, there was some deliberation. I wasn't it wasn't completely uh, off the cuff. I didn't completely just run with my uh, you know broken heart and <laughs> impulsive shitty impulsive behaviors on that one. I thought about it. She has a good enough uh, sense of humor. If she saw it, you know, she could. But I don't know. I don't necessarily think that she'd be sitting down and watching the whole thing. Um, but if she did, I think she'd have a pretty good sense of humor about it. Hopefully get a good laugh. Hopefully, honestly, some uh, some good feels, too. 12.07. All right, I'll wait one. one more minute. I don't know, should I give people until 12.10? I'll give them until 12.10. I'm not gonna be a stickler about this. I got time. Hmm. Okay. So I can at least launch Unity, right? Um, 
yeah and if and if people don't know how to launch unity then uh <laughs> not your guy um we are gonna open up feature request to game It's also my first time doing a a scheduled live screen, live stream. Um, I got kind of spooked for a second because I thought I was gonna have to create a whole new template. But <sighs> scoozy. <coughs> Ooh. Okay. What time is it? Twelve oh nine. I'll wait one more minute. If you're in the stream right now, say what's up in the chat. Let me know you're here. Let me know who you are. I really wish I would have set this at, at low latency though. God damn it. There's gonna be a it's gonna be a little lag. My bad guys. I think there's there's gotta be a way I could set low latency on the streams as the default setting because I forget every time and then not being able to change it afterward while you're in the middle of the stream is such a pain in the ass. Um, all right, 1210, here we go. So what we're doing here, let's, let's take a little review, right? So we can hit this little maximize on play button. Press play. Um, let me make sure that that's full screen. Yep, okay. And you could move the mouse around and the, ca the camera pivots around our player here who has an idle animation, uh, which you got from Mixamo. And then I'm hitting, I'm using WASD for this. So holding W, he walks forward and get to move my mouse around and you'll see that like when I move my mouse he adjusts to that direction and it's not all snappy it's nice and smooth um, even if we do a 180 it's kind of like gets a nice little ease in and ease out uh, or it's not an ease but it's it's smooth and then uh, holding forward if we hold shift now he does this and we got these anime style speed lines um, and if we let go, gets back to walking, da, 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 and you'll see that the camera goes from this telephoto to telephoto, meaning just kind of like space is more compressed. Um, so the camera is actually further away from him right now. And when we press shift to run, the camera gets closer, but switches to a more wide angle lens. Um, and it's like, a it's a transition to a wide angle lens. So you can see if I press it on and off, you'll see space compressing and expanding. Um, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. And also uh, last thing is if you're holding shift first before even running and then you hit forward, he also still goes into a run, which sounds obvious, but guess what? You have to do a thing for that. So I'm gonna get out of here and Let's get started on this. So first, kind of laid out. Um, let's see. I think what I'll do is da, 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 head into scenes, and then I will just start a totally new scene, and we'll call this uh, feature request uh, live stream toot tooty. Okay, opening that up. Um, excuse me. Mm, this window needs to just be in just a wee bit. I think something like that's fine, whatever. All right, what are we doing first here? So I have some files. Um, I already dragged them in, but I am going to open a, um, 
a Mixamo page. And I'm just opening it on a different monitor right now, just so I could type my shit in. But I'll come back over here and show you too. Um, okay. All right, great. So this is Mixamo, M-I-X-A-M-O dot com. And uh, let's see. I don't know why my my uh, my shit's spazzing out, not letting me. Oh, there we go. Um, so this is the player the player model I brought in. And essentially, all you do is you go to upload character, do select a character file, and then you can go to like where'd I have this one stored? Um, okay. Did I have it in there? Or did I have it? Yeah, here we go. So this blank NPC FBX is the original character model. So I open this. And then it has this thing called the auto rigger. Now take a quick look at this uh, frame right here and you'll see that um, you should be able to make it out that, especially if your character has more detail than mine, but sometimes it might go, uh, like you might miss this. This is actually the back of our player. So we need our player facing forwards. Here, here it says, use the arrow buttons to rotate your character and have its uh, front face forward. So you could just use these over here to rotate it. See, now it's facing forward. So now with our character facing forward, hit next. It asks us to, excuse me, uh, put these markers where we like need them and over here is like a really good um, kind of like uh, to put your mind at ease you can kind of see like where they generally put them um, just in case you're like well what exactly constitutes like the chin is it the bottom of the chin is it the center of the chin um, so this is kind of how I'm doing it it's a really rough approximation and generally I think whatever the hell they got going on in the background here uh, works really well so putting these elbows and these knees and then the groin and you'll see the groin is kind of like the edge of that circle is at the very bottom of where her like her groin or her body ends so that's kind of how I'm doing it for here too and then using symmetry I think that just sets it up so you can move any of these individually if you untick this you can move these around individually if for whatever reason you imported a character model that was asymmetrical uh, yeah and then once you're done hit next and then So there it is. I mean, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so I did this, right? And then you would hit next and you'd hit like confirm and shit like that. But um, I already have mine done. I'm not trying to overwrite it. So closing that. Mm. And then from here, you have your shit all uploaded. Now you can click on any of these animations. So they have this animations tab and you can click on these and it automatically applies. Now, some of them are so specific. Um, or that's my way to uh, I'm trying to figure out how to put it. But you'll see that some of them have like the animation sort of is about going from one place to another and like playing out this whole animation. So you couldn't do something where you had him like stuck in place to like loop it very well. This doesn't loop very well at all. Um, but then there are other ones where um, like this one you'll see that it loops very well. You see that? It's just looping over and over again. You can't really see the, the cut point. Um, and then a really good uh, example of this is if you search a run, with this little search bar up here, um, like this one. See, he's running, or it's running in place, like, or from one place to another. But if you have in place checked, 
it'll just loop that in a way where you can, you know, better, it's, it's better suited for, um, you know, moving it around on your own, whether it be an animation or a game. So that's what that button's for, in place. Not all animations have it, but there you go. And then a good way to offset that, like sometimes, like let's say we couldn't do this in place, right? Let's say this animation got really different towards the end. Um, you can hit in, uh, the mirror button and then you'll see, oh wait, maybe I have to do this. No, maybe I'm tripping. Never mind, forget it. Um, I could have swore there was a way to, oh no, no, you know what that is? That's, um, right, so mirror just honestly flips it. So like, see this hand is up to the left right here. If you mirror it, now that open palm hand is off to the right, see? Okay, um, what I was trying to explain though is that like sometimes like what you could do to fix stuff like this is when you actually get into Unity, you can get the animation, open up the animation file, copy the keyframes and then flip them and put them in front of each other. So it kind of like, it does this. Let me see, I could do it myself here. So essentially what you'd see is like, you go do 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 and it would just kind of ping pong back and forth. So that's um that's that's kind of like the gist of, of Mixamo really, because everything else is like so specific to each one. Like you'll see this character arm space thing, like if I put in place, um, this is just a slider, this character arm space, crank it up arms are way out, crank it down, arms are way in, and you can just kind of fit that to your needs. Overdrive, I believe, is literally just how fast it goes through the frames. So it's not really like, it can become really unnatural. It's just kind of like, it's literally just a speed up thing. Um, but the opposite direction works fine for like, for slow motion stuff. Um, and every now and then you just need a little bit of that overdrive. But I would say kind of be careful with this because you could always um, get a more normalized version and then speed it up later um, in Unity without having to kind of like get this baked in uh, low temporal resolution file. Which is just to say that like if you downloaded this one, if you don't want to end up with something that only has these few frames that constitute the sped up animation. Uh, trim, it's just kind of like the length of the clip can't really see it too well in these ones, but like you'll see kind of, it's just essentially like, see, and then as I kind of move this out, right? Does that make sense? It's just trimming the keyframes. Um, yeah, and then like I said, the rest of them are, are also all so like specific. <laughs> yeah. See the style one, 100 to this side is that style, and then all the way down to zero is that style, and then in between, it's this and you could just kind of slide that to your liking all right got it easy peasy um i think the last thing i'll say for this is that there's kind of like there is a limited a number of of animations that you can go through in here um i don't know how often they up like update it and stuff like that but you know good practice is kind of like s searching for something using uh different searching for the same thing using different language like using different words um, so kind of like run or jog might yield different results. Um, and so, you know, it's not, it's not like a perfect search engine. Um, and then on top of that, there are animations that might, might suit your needs without actually being like labeled as the thing you want. So for example, in that one game, I had to have them like, doing lines of coke, right? So like, ideally they would have had a little like uh, a rolled up, you know, they would have had an animation where they went like this, right? And then ugh, like that, but you know, they don't have that on here or at least not yet. <laughs> uh, but you can have a drink animation. So this one right here, I believe is the one I used. So you see that? It's kind of like has this, right? Kind of like the and then ah, uh, like that. Um, so you can crank up the intensity to make it a more dramatic. See, so like, like that now, and then you crank up the speed a little bit more, right? You can see what this looks like.
right? And now it kind of, you can start seeing how it gets repurposed for that. And you can even like crank the arm space down a little bit more, right? To kind of bring the hand closer to the face. Yeah, so, um, and then like a thing you could do is like you could trim it so it only comes in like right here, which you could do in Unity. You don't necessarily have to do it in here. Um, and then there's other, th there's other times where like, I've like done it backwards. Like I've played a clip backwards because it worked better that way. Okay. All right. That concludes our Mixamo tutorial. Um, so let's say you've downloaded all of your, oh, I should say really quick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It does not, it does not conclude. Click download. Duh. Right. And then it should just by default be FBX with scaling 30 frames per second, blah, blah, blah. You can change these to your liking, but like the default settings are going to do you right. Okay. So that's how you get those mixed modes. Uh, animations and then you're gonna put them in a folder drag drag and drop them into here so in mine I had this player folder and then a subfolder player animations and here are the files that it originally comes with this walking with shopping bag walking with shopping bag fast standing with briefcase idle running and run um, now you can see over here let's see if I can get this you can have a little preview window over here. So when you click on any one of these, it's gonna come up over here in the sidebar, which is called the inspector. See right here, inspector. Um, I'm using mostly uh, default stuff right now. Um, so you can click on any one of these and then you can hit play and it'll play. And the navigation uh, controls are the same as in the Unity editor. Right. And then over here, you can play it back at different speeds. This does not affect how fast it's being played back in game. This is just your preview playback speed. Um, so now that you have these, what you want to do is isolate um, any one of these. And I think like a good way to kind of like, I mean, so far what's worked for me, I should say, to really kick things off is just take your idle animation as your starting uh, game object so I take this the full thing and I just drag and drop it into here now you'll see it's blue it has this like blue color so right now it's currently a prefab as in this is a reference to this which means that like if I change this ever it's gonna change this too if I change it in here if I click over on the standing with briefcase excuse me and I change any of this shit over here I'm gonna see all those effects. Um, and that's just kind of like a, you know, uh, a sketchy way to, to operate. Um, sometimes, a lot of times, for what we're doing, it's sketchy. Um, actually using prefabs is great for plenty of other things. But for this, what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna unpack prefab completely. And what that's, do is, what that's gonna do is just separate it from this. So now it's its own little standalone thing and you'll see that it just turns into a gray box now. Um, so inside of it, this is just an empty game object, essentially. Um, if you click on this, if you click on it, and then come over here, put your mouse over the editor or the scene window, and hit F, um, you'll see that like the 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 center like it centers up on our on our object. Um, kind of wondering right now. No, no, okay. Um, so we're going to want to hit F with this collect, uh, selected. You're going to hit F2, and you're going to call it player. <clears throat> now, this is, like I said, I wanted to kind of just point this out. This is an empty game object. So if I took these out really quick and then just selected this, you'll see this is nothing. This is just like a reference point. And so I'm just going to control Z back to that. Um, and that's just because you always want your player, like, um, um, like it's, it's a, what do you call it? Transform like origin point, it's pivot point, you know, um, which is this, this little center, this little axis center where all of them kind of like meet. Um, this is considered it's zero, zero, zero point. Um, you always want it to be at the bottom of your player, like at its feet, because if you ever use rigid body and stuff like that, and also just like a nav mesh agent, it, unity is always going to want to put that, like that little point on the surface point like that's where it starts so you want that to be the feet otherwise 
if you had it so for example um, it was like this then you'll see that it's in the center now if you put this character on a nav mesh um, or you know use rigid body and like we're using physics this part of the body would like clip through it would like it would just be gone um, actually with rigid body it would stay it would it would kind of like wobble around but that would be its like uh, center of mass um, which could also be problematic so it is all very contextual but that's that's a good rule of thumb to remember um, there we go. Okay. So uh, these other things are these these mixamo colon hips colon left up left up leg right up leg and all that stuff. These are all joints, and you'll see that they're kind of like a hierarchy, um, and all that is is like set up for the animation. So you really don't really want to touch these. <clears throat> and then this is the actual model itself, the VK zero zero three one underscore toddler stickman. That is the actual mesh. So you'll see when I click on it, it comes over here and says like, yeah, the components it has is a skinned mesh renderer. Um, so the animations are very specifically set up for this mesh. And it, and it can be a pain in the ass to try to like mix and match animations um, that were meant for different meshes using different um, like, uh, like skeleton joints, you know. So be careful mixing and matching animations. Um, so now we have our player here. <clears throat> and what we want to do is if we, let me see, make sure that this is all, OK, cool. With player selected, you can go to Add Component. And you're going to go to Animator. Now, look really carefully right here. This is animation and this is animator. You always want to make sure that you're uh, selecting the right one because they're pretty different things. <clears throat> Not going to get into that right now, but animator is the one we want. Um, so with that selected, you're going to see it says right here controller, none, and it won't do anything. So like this is a really useless component unless we put a controller in it. So you can come over here um, and you can right click create and then animator controller and when you click on it it'll create one um, it'll have it'll look like this it'll kind of have this um, this little symbol um, at first I think it's just gonna say animator controller and it'll look like this because it'll ask you to name it first and then I just named mine player animator controller All right so um, I suppose it would probably be a good idea to um, to do that, right? So I'm gonna do this along with you since I said it'd be from scratch. So I'm just gonna call this one old and then I'm gonna make a new one. So create um, animator controller. I'm gonna call it player anim animator controller. Okay. Now, selecting our player, we can drag and drop the player animator controller in here. So now it has that controller. It still doesn't do anything. You can hit play. Um, let's see. Right, he's totally just still. I'm also going to uncheck that. Um, so what we want is for that animation to be playing, that idle animation. So if you go inside the player animator controller, this is what it shows. This is your animator tab, right? So you can zoom in and zoom out. Um, has this any state, entry, and exit. Um, what we want to do is put in all of our animation clips in here. So all of these, they have little animation clips inside them. So for example, we're starting with our idle one. We want that to be the starting point. You know, you want you want your character to immediately be playing the idle animation most of the time, for our case at least, right? So, I'm gonna open up this, the standing with briefcase idle, and this thing right here, this little triangle with the three lines behind it, and they're, and when you get them from Mixamo, they're all gonna just gonna be labeled Mixamo.com, which is lame because, uh, you know, uh, it would be nice to have some proper labeling, but what are you gonna do? Um, what you 
need to do is rename that shit. So what we're gonna do is click it, and if you hit Control D, it'll duplicate it, and it'll kind of make it its own thing, right? So now it's not just a part of this package. Um, so with it selected, I'm gonna hit F2, and we're gonna call it, um, we're just gonna call it idle, right? And and you know what, I, so that's what you would do, right? But I'm just gonna delete this one because because uh, I already have my idle here. I assure you it's the same exact thing. Um, so actually, yeah, the only thing that you're gonna wanna change is when you do select yours, when you're done calling it idle, come up here and select loop time. That's the only thing you're gonna change is this loop time thing. You're gonna select that because it should start off unchecked but you want it checked. What does that do? Obviously, it means looping the clip, right? Come on. Um, so then you're gonna wanna do that with the other ones, but let's just kick it off with the idle one. So you're gonna take this clip and drag it into the animation, uh, the animator controller. Um, this is all the animation clips that we wanna put into our player, and we're gonna start it with idle. And you'll see it even makes this little line drawing from entry to idle. Now, when you're naming your clips, you really want to have the most simple and simple yet specific and memorable, like easy to memorize names. Um, and when I say easy to memorize, like not even just like the name of it, but how you capitalize it. Because this, the spelling and everything is like really important because later on in Playmaker, we need to physically write out the name of the clip. Um, there are other ways where you don't do that, but the way I'm teaching you today, um, that's how we're doing it. And um, and it's a common way. It's a really kind of like, it's a really quick and easy way to do it. So you're gonna wanna write it out exactly how the clip is spelled. So in our case later on, we're gonna have to spell this out, lowercase I-D-L-E. Um, so we're starting with this one. And now, um, if you hit play, See, he's idling around and his animation loops. So that's about as bare bones as it gets and that'll keep looping, trust me. Um, but, you know, we want him to run around and shit. So uh, we're gonna get in all these other animation bits. And don't worry, I'm still gonna show you how to install Playmaker right now. Um, and we're gonna get to the Playmaker right after we set these things up, just the animation bits. There's plenty of setup, setup after that. Um, so you're just gonna do the same thing with all these other ones, the same routine, where you, okay? Like you got um, the running one, you're gonna open it up, click this, press Control D, it's gonna duplicate it, um, and you're gonna name it run, and then so on and so forth, right? So you're, wanna, you're gonna wanna do it for idle, run, and walking. And even this one, walking with bag, like I should honestly just called walking, but I was kind of like, uh, maybe, <clears throat> maybe there'll be like a different walking later, and maybe there's like a an item that will eventually make it pick up or drop or something. So, um, after you've had those um, duplicated and renamed, and don't forget checking their little um, loop time thing, you're gonna drag and drop them. Um, mm, got some burger in my mouth. Um, you're gonna drag and drop them in like this. So you can organize them in a way where you can kind of see the flow of how these might um, kind of be called on. So you start with idle, obviously, right? And then you can run and you can walk and these can kind of go around the same area. You know, you can kind of put them on top of each other because these are two different states. Mm. Or you can also put them in front of each other because you can imagine like going from idle to run to walking. Um, but these are its two moving states, and this is kind of a clean way to do it. <clears throat> so now with those set up, we need to actually put a Playmaker component on this little fella, make him do stuff. So to install Playmaker, what you do is you go to Assets, and then you go to Import Package, and you go to Custom Package, and then wherever you save your Playmaker um, Unity package file, in my case, it's right here. It's kind of in a folder where I have all of my project files, um, my Unity projects. 
So I know whenever I make one, it's just in one folder up from whatever my Unity project is. Um, so you usually, because I think I, I just got this new solid state drive, so I kind of I, I, I've made a new folder for my Unity project files. But uh, at least I know where most of my projects are, and they're in here. And this is where I put the Playmaker package. So you're going to click on that. Um, and then you're going to hit import. And I don't know if it's just because I've had this imported before already, um, but I could, I could just tell you what happens basically. Um, so you're gonna hit import and then it'll have this window um, that'll ask you to install. And then you can run from that to, um, import one more time in fact i'll actually show you i i have a clip of it i had i had this prepared just because i was like ah this shit might not play um so let me see oh zoli what's up zoli i hope you're learning literally anything right now um I'm just bringing up a video to show you what what it looks like to Okay. Let's see. Oh, I think this is it. Duh, it's literally labeled installing Playmaker. Okay. <clears throat> so, right, so you see I find it here and I hit open, prepares the package. Down here, you hit import. And then it has install Playmaker, which is what you hit. And it says always backup projects before updating. Use version control to manage changes. So this is a really good piece of advice. Um, it's never fucked me over because I've basically been playing by this rule since the beginning. Um, but I know generally how bad a Unity project can get fucked up. It really is not like... Um, uh, uh, like I come from film and just kind of other visual media and stuff. So like, yeah, I've had a Photoshop document fuck up on me, uh, a premiere, you know, like an edit. I've had like even After Effects projects get all fucked up on me. But the thing about those is that like, there's, there's generally kind of like a way to like use undo and, um, and go to previous, uh, save files, like, uh, like backup saves. Um, that it, you know, with autosave turned on and everything. Um, but with Unity, it has like, it's, it's, you're, you're building a piece of software. You know, you're building this game that is like in all of your folders down here. Like this, these are, these aren't just references. Like the, the, those are actually like those files. So if you delete a file from here, you're deleting a file off your hard drive. Um, and there's just a lot of other destructive ways that, that Unity works. So you have, you have to back up projects by literally copying and pasting the entire project folder places. There, I mean, you don't need to, ge like generally just kind of like, that's like how, the easy way to do it. Um, and there's definitely some tutorials out there to show you kind of like the absolute necessary components that you need to back up. Um, but it's just, it's, it's not as easy as finding a, an old save file, you know? Um, so this is a good piece of advice. Installation, always back up projects before updating. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's move forward. Let's say you backed up your project and you're going to install Playmaker. So click that button and then it even double checks. It's like, I made a backup. Sure did. Um, and then it prepares that. And I think for whatever reason, when I did this one, it like took so much longer than usual. Okay. Yeah, here we go. 
So then it opens up this next window and you want to hit import one more time. And here's where it kind of took forever for some reason. Usually this is a pretty quick process. Right, okay. And then when it's done, you could just close that out. And now you have Plate Maker. Okay, so that's how you do it, right? Um, now, when you start though, you're going to have something that looks like this. So what you want to do is now you have a Playmaker tab up here and you have the Playmaker editor. You can click on that, and close this window again, and this is your Playmaker editor. You put this wherever you want, but I find right here is great. Why isn't this? You'll kind of find some, some really strange. Let's see. There we go. Um, yeah, so I put mine right there. And then the other window that you're gonna to wanna to use during this is the Action Browser. So you can go to Playmaker, Editor Windows, Action Browser. Mine kind of popped out outside of the stream area, um, but this is what your Action Browser is. Uh, I'm just gonna clear that. It looks like this. And I'm gonna put it over here on the bottom kind of side of the inspector. So that's what your setup should look like. I think that's a pretty pretty clean setup. So let's start putting some uh, Playmaker FSMs in this. I'm gonna click player, and in the inspector over here, we're gonna hit add component. We're gonna type in Playmaker, right? And over here, let's actually just full on, right? Playmaker FSM, that's what we want. I'm gonna click it, and you have this over here. Um, <clears throat> Let me see if right. So if you hit edit, it brings up all of the innards of this FSM over here. So now in this Playmaker editor, we are seeing this FSM. What FSM stands for, by the way, is finite state machine. Um, so there's other times where you might hear FSM being thrown around. Playmaker isn't the only one that like has that. Um, but you'll always be able to identify it by the big red square with, um, I want to say a Chinese character in it. I don't know what language that might be. I'm pretty sure that's Chinese. <clears throat> um, and you can name your FSM something like, um, let's see, like uh, player controller FSM. We might rename this because I'm kind of I'm I'm slowly kind of getting back into the zone of like what my last method was. But we have it open here. We can rename that later if we need to. Um, and what we could do, what we could start off with is something that just reads where the camera is and like where like how to move the camera around even if the character isn't moving let's figure out how to like move the camera around uh, so da, 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 da. Mm, 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 mm. okay we can get this main camera that comes default and right now it's super far away and its field of view is 60. so i think yeah, the higher you crank this, the crazier, like the, the wider the field of view gets. And the lower it is, the, um, yeah, the, the more narrow the field of view is. Okay, so we can kind of move it like this. So we're kind of more, a little closer to this character. I think last time my default field of view was 25. Um, that was a decent number to start from. And then I put it, put the camera like right here. Uh, and then kind of rotated and then scooch like that. That's not bad, right? Maybe a little higher like that. There we go. So that's kind of generally where, where we would want this. Um, 
Now, <laughs> excuse me, we can put all of this in a new object, but what we want is the new object to be at the, at the player's origin point. Um, so you can think of it as like a, as a pivot point, like kind of like, um, you know, where you might put like a bolt or a screw on something, uh, like a, just imagine like a, whatever, like a sheet of metal with a hole in it. Like if it had the hole right here and you put a screw through it, you could, you could then sort of twist it around from this point, you know, so it can like spin around from that point. Um, we want the camera to be able to do that because in the third person controller, you know, you wouldn't want the camera to just look around all willy nilly like it's a, you know, it's its own head. You want it to focus on the character all the time. So what you could do is go over to the hips, which is kind of like center of mass, you know, for your character. This is kind of like, cause if you had it at the bottom, it's like, okay, it's always gonna be kind of looking at your character's feet. If you had it at its head, it's always gonna be kind of like looking up or like down at your character too much. But the hips is like the nice, perfect little center point. So from here with hips selected, you could right click and then create empty. And that's gonna put a get empty game object in the hips hierarchy. Um, and we don't want it inside of it necessarily right now. We're gonna to wanna to put another one inside a little while, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're gonna have this selected um, and we're gonna call it like camera pivot. Right, and then we could duplicate it right now, holding control with it selected, you hit control D. And then this one, you can call it um, like camera container. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna leave camera pivot there and I'm gonna take camera container out. Um, you'll see why camera pivots there in a moment. Um, generally just kind of note, it's gonna be a way that we can focus back at the center of our character later uh, and this camera container one though, we want to put our main camera inside of it. And so now you'll see our camera, since it's a child of it, that's what it means when you put like, when you, when you put things in the hierarchy like this, I also don't know how, how much like super beginner shit I need to like be putting in, in this when I say shit like, Oh, do you know what a child or a parent of something is? Uh, so please, if you're watching this out of the handful of people here right now, uh, let me know if that kind of stuff is helpful or if I should just skim right over it. Hopefully it's not too much um, if it is helpful. Like hopefully it's not too much for the people who are advanced. Um, I feel like I'm not saying enough of, I'm not saying that much of it. So yeah, um, but now you'll see that the main camera is a child of the camera container. So if we grab the camera container and we rotate it, you'll see that the camera is always rotating around the character. You see that? That's like the pivot point. Uh, just to do a little bit of cleanup work though, I am actually gonna take the camera out of this, uh, grab the camera container. And since it was from the hips, it kind of was like not perfectly level. It's not totally important, but uh, you know, it's gonna bug the shit out of me. So I'm gonna go over here to the rotation area with, with the camera container selected. I'm gonna go over the rotation and I'm gonna zero these out. So now they're all zeroed out. Um, and I don't know if, yeah, even the position, no, I wanna leave all that, right? What about this one? Yeah, let's see. So I zeroed out the X and the Z uh, transform as well. So now that's super duper level and clean. I'll put the main camera back into the controller. Um, and uh, yeah, so now you see, swing around, nice and perfect. Okay. So, um, what do we do next? Let me let me refer to my document over here. Uh, da, 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 da. Create empty, create empty again with some location of the hips, means connected, moved independently, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, da, da, da. Make the game owner child champion. Okay. Uh, and create another game object. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Now I remember this. Right. Like I said, this is sort of my simplified version of uh, of a of a more long and thorough um, and complicated 
uh, to be fair, uh, tutorial. So I do kind of have to give myself a refresher as I'm going through this. So far, so good. Clicking on camera container, what we're going to do is right click and then create empty. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this, uh, what did I call it last time? Mm, character pointer, right? So we're going to hit F2 and call it character pointer. And then we're going to move it forward, keeping it inside of, you know, the, the camera container. Um, oh, I called it camera container, like Steve Brule. Camera container. Okay. So we're putting this character pointer in front of the character. Um, it is kind of like to taste, you know, uh, however you're, you like it. Um, it does need to be a fair ways out. I think at the very least two full character heights away. So if you imagine the character laying down flat, two lengths of the body, um, I think like right here might be good. We'll see, you know, again, this is something you can adjust later. I think that's good. So now when you have this selected, um, you have the actual container, which is right here. You have the main camera, which moves around with it from back here. And then the character point it, pointer, which is in front of the player. Now, the reason we want this character pointer is because later on we're gonna use Playmaker to make the character face that pointer. So whenever the mouse moves around, the camera moves, right? And then the pointer will always be in front of the camera. So if the player is not facing that pointer, we'll use Playmaker to make it face that pointer. So it's always gonna be kind of steering the player. Um, so what we could do is start with this camera container and we're gonna wanna put an FSM on it. Let me just make sure that everything else is all set up. Um, da, 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 da. Um, Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Player camera game object. Let's see. Playmaker FSM. We're going to call it move towards, maybe add another FSM, call it mouse look. Okay, so on our camera container, gonna add Playmaker FSM and move towards. And then let's put another one. And we're gonna call this one mouse look. All right, let's see. With move towards, um, needs one thing, a move towards. Okay, edit. Hitting edit on the move towards. Then in our actions, it's our Playmaker um, actions browser. You can type in move towards. Here it is. You only need to type in move if it was recent, but um, you get to type in the whole thing, find out which folder it's in. It is in transform. Uh, these are all folders, by the way. So if you kind of like clear this, all these buttons, these are all your array related actions. These are all your game object related reactions, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna want to move towards. You can, with it selected, with it actually like blue right now, you could just hit enter and it'll enter it in, or you could double click it, or you could drag it in. So you could drag, you see it would let me put it there, or you can hit enter, it'll put it there. It'll automatically put it in, I believe the lowest point if there are other things in it. So, um, or maybe the highest point. See for yourself. This is this is what learning is all about. Uh, and lastly, um, being able to just double click it. So, with a move toward in here, um, we we are going to use this to move. I believe the player. Right. Let me just make sure. Um, move toward. So in that and drag the camera pivot game object into the target object slot. Okay, so the tar target object slot. Um, right, so this camera pivot game object that we had in the beginning, um, we could, what we could do for that, honestly, 
is I'm gonna drag the one that's inside of the player that we put in like on, that's a child of the player hips. Uh, I'm gonna take it out for just a second, and then I'm gonna set these to zero. Um, Z and X for position, and then all X Y Z for the rotation. All right, just so it's level again. I'm gonna put it back into the hips. Okay, and if I click on the camera controller. Um, and just in case this isn't showing up for you, you just remember hit edit to bring it up, uh, the move towards FSM. The target object, now we can click and drag this camera pivot into here. And so now it's going to always say, move this container, this whole damn camera thing towards that, um, that spot, which is always gonna be the player. So it's another way of saying, it's always gonna be moving our whole camera rig system uh, towards the player. So that's what we want in there. Uh, put the pedal to the fucking metal by setting max speed to 20. Um, so set the max speed to 20. And set finish distance to zero because first is the worst and zero is the hero and my dog will beat the shit out of your dog. Um, so finish distance to zero. All right. Um, next, in the second FSM, the one called the mouse look, we're gonna add one simple action, mouse look. So for mouse look, I'm hitting edit again. I'm gonna type in mouse look. Not mouse look two, just mouse look. Um, <laughs> I'm already just thinking of terrible jokes here. Um, okay, so for mouse look, uh, I changed the Y sensitivity to a negative number, so it'll invert the direction. Right, so the Y sensitivity, it's set to 15. I'm gonna set it to negative 15. This is a, this is a rule that you can remember for a lot of things um, that sometimes if you don't see like a little button that says invert or like to change the direction of something um, or to have like the opposite effect that you're looking for whatever, it, you know, like whatever the effect that you're trying to get is, you want it like a little button that says do the opposite of this. I'll, a lot of the time, if there's a numerical value, if there's a new, if there's a numerical variable that you are uh, that is available to you to change, um, know that you can achieve more often than not the uh, the opposite effect by just putting in a negative. So in this case, the sensitivity, it's kind of it's kind of weird because it's like sensitivity. You might not first think that um, that that's like necessarily about which direction, but yeah. So if, if you don't have that negative, the mouse moves the camera sort of up and down. Um, I forget if it's like, I forget kind of which direction it actually goes, but typing a negative will give you the opposite. So it's like in, you know, you get the invert mouse look option. Um, so I changed the Y sensitivity to a negative number. So it'll invert the mouse direction. Now run your game. Whoa, you can move the camera and shit. What? That's so fucking loco, Holmes. Okay. So. <clears throat> um, right there we go see that that is indeed a loco Holmes okay so right now if you move the mouse up literally moving your mouse up you know see my cursor going up the camera goes low but points up right and if I move the cursor down um, the camera looks down but raises higher up into the air. So you'll see if I would have changed this to just, instead of negative 15, if I hit 15, hit play. <clears throat> now it does the opposite where if I put my camera, if I push my camera, I mean, if I push my cursor up, the camera starts looking down and raises higher. If I put my cursor down, the camera starts lowering and looking up. But that's stupid, yo. So I'm going to put negative 15. Um, we could finish up the basic camera by going to our look forward FSM on our player in the first state. And we're going to add a get FSM float and float compare. So with this guy, um, the look forward, I think we're just going to call this one that. Instead of play player controller FSM, we're going to call it... Mm, look forward. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna hit edit, and then this one we're gonna put 
a git fsm float and a float compare. Get fsm float, okay, and a float compare. Okay, so hitting enter does put it on the top most one, I think. Should I don't know if you could change that somehow. Um, so for the git fsm float, um, da, 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 which one do I want to get? Um, uh, we're using owner because we're trying to get the information. This object. Da, 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 da. Oh, we're going to use it to get the input axis magnitude. So first, we do need to actually set up um, the actual player movement stuff. So now, what we want to do is now that we can control the camera, we want to at least push our player object forward and backward, left and right, and stuff. Um, and that way, we can kind of see how that works in tandem with the character camera. Um, so, da, da, da. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. okay, the player is going to need a few components on it, components, da, da, da. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to add a component, okay, to the first component, we'll add as an animator component, we already did that. Three FSMs. Okay. Uh, the first one we'll call player controller. Then the second one player animations. And the third one look forward. Okay, so we have look forward on here. So the next one we're gonna add a couple more of these, right? And I'm just gonna put this um, look forward FSM at the bottom. Oops, come on. There we go. So the first one is going to be player controller. The second one is going to be called player animations. And the last one is look forward. <clears throat> okay, uh, clicking edit on the first FSM for player controller. Um, two actions. The first one is a get axis vector and the second is a translate action. So get axis vector and then um, let's see. I don't know if I should probably go through the, the <laughs> yeah let's just put it in translate right. Okay so we have let's put the translate on bottom by just clicking and dragging get axis get axis vector followed by a translate so the thing about get axis vector is it uses this stuff up here if you go to edit and then go to project settings in your input manager you have all these things that unity kind of sets up for you by default which are kind of like um you know standard controls that they think that you're you're going to want to use so you'll see up here that there's like gravity there's a value for dead whatever that means and then sensitivity and snap um and then over here is like fire one fire two fire three jump because these are kind of like um touchstone or cornerstones of a, of a video game right obviously not all games have this but they're like fucking everybody just makes the same stupid game over and over again so we're just gonna give them what they want um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this get axis vector as a way to talk to this information um, because this information <clears throat> is already set up in a way where you see where it says right here like left and right and a and d you know those are your left and right keys that's your it knows to kind of look for information that way and it's set up in a way where it's kind of like unity's always listening for that information because it's here in the input manager you could change that shit to something else you could you could put in a different key if you want but these are the keys we want, right? So this is what it's referencing when we're using the get axis vector thing, right? So the get axis vector, um, let's see what we're gonna wanna do first. Uh, 
Okay, I did change the multiplier variable in that. I think I changed it, let me see. I think I changed it to like a 0.7, right? Okay, making a variable gives you more control. You like, da, 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 da. right, 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 right. So the, so the multiplier, um, we could just change it to a number, but the multiplier is gonna be basically like the thing that lets us uh, control the speed of things. So I'm gonna hit this so equals button and that's going to go for changing it from like a number to letting us use a variable so i'm going to click on this i'm going to click on new variable and i'm going to call this the uh, axis vector multiplier right so that axis vector multiplier that's going to be like the thing that affects our speed um, so the higher we crank that multiplier that's going to be the faster it goes and the lower the slower so we could see this variable that we put in now in the variable section right here. And it says axis vector multiplier used once. So that means it exists kind of somewhere in all of our programming one time. Um, and then the type is a float. And all a float is is, an, is not an integer. So it's like, <clears throat> um, it's something that'll allow us to, to have more precision because you're using fractions. Um, so our float, the value we're gonna give it is 0.7. And that is a number that like, is, is gonna change per situation. But when I was originally building this and kind of like testing out which speeds work best, I found that for the animation of that walk <clears throat> um, that I'm using, the walk animation that I'm using, um, 0.7 uh, was pretty solid. So, you know, adjust this to your liking because uh, if you're using different animations, it's gonna be different for you. And also the scale of your, your, your actual player object will change that too. So just messing around with this number, find, find what works for you. And then later on, you'll kind of have a point of reference on how, how much to, um, to multiply it or how much to like, or how to like grow it or shrink it to change how fast you want your character to go. Okay, so, um, with that set up, da, da, da. speed multiplier. Actually, you know what? Holy shit. Let's, I don't know why we're calling this axis uh, vector multiplier. Let's just call it what it is. Let's call it speed multiplier, right? That's a lot easier. <clears throat> um, okay, let's see. Then we're gonna drag in our main camera to the relative to slot, right? So this relative to, uh, we're gonna have this main camera gonna drag and drop in here okay um so da, da, da. Mm. right and this get axis vector i believe hmm i want to say that let me see by the way if you never if you kind of ever have questions about an action and you're kind of just wondering like i wonder if that thing is what it sounds like or if like is is this part a multiplier for this part or that part you know if you kind of have like questions about the specificities of it you can always hover your mouse over it first of all right the specific spot so it says the type that's a string um that's the type of variable it is which is just kind of text right um or even right here the multiplier if you put your mouse over that it'll say float see type is float um and then it'll give you a little brief description of what it is it says input axis are reported to the range of negative one to one this multiplier lets you set a new range um and this relative to is what i kind of have a question about right now where it says type is game object right because we put a game object in there and it says make the result relative to a game object typically the main camera um doesn't quite help still because like i'm still kind of wondering like you know just I want some more details on this. Uh, so what you could do is this little book up here, this little question mark book, you can click it and then it'll give you this. It'll bring up uh, a window, your browser, and you can read more about it. It'll have a picture of it. It says, gets a world direction vector from two input axis, typically used for a third person controller with relative to set to the camera. Okay, so like if that, if that can kind of, um, you know, put things into perspective now, knowing that it's typically used for a third person camera, um, it's kind of like about, I think, 
the, uh, the only way my brain's kind of processing this is like it's about figuring out where things are on a certain axis like in relation to something right so you could put that little relative to um so it's like you could leave that relative to empty but m more often than not you're using this action because you're making a third person camera uh, controller and so you do use that relative um so that's what we're setting up for that one um okay relative to in store vector we're going to create a new variable called axis vector so all that sweet vector information gets jarred up and packaged and sold back to us later and then we can do whatever we want with it right so the store vector <clears throat> um right okay we're just going to call this axis vector okay so the reason we're storing this information is because later on we're going to want to find out how much of an angle or like uh yeah just like kind of um we want to figure out when the camera should start facing that pivot point thing and this this uh storing vector thing is going to kind of give us like a um a good starting point so store vector um uh, in store magnitude, we're going to create a new variable called input axis magnitude. Uh, again, so we can reference and use and abuse and change it as we please later. Uh, so store magnitude, new variable, uh, input axis magnitude. Pop, pop. Translate. Uh, okay. Translate action is for moving things around. You can think of translate as push or move. In the translate action, you'll see that game object is set to use owner. That means it's performing all this stuff on our player model. For the vector variable, we're gonna choose our axis vector. Right, so translate, just in case you didn't get that, is like, um, is like, uh, let's see, what's kind of, what's bigger? Like, would I have anything like, uh, there we go. Can you see this? Um, so if we, if we translate an object, right, if we're using translate, all it's really saying is kind of like move in a direction. Because if you use something like set position, it'll just kind of like snap to it. Um, but translate, it's saying like, okay, when you change the number on, say, this X or Y or Z, whatever it is, if, like, if that was the Z axis and, you're, and you add like 10 to it, it's using 10 units to push itself like, I think per second or something yeah you can check per second so that'll be kind of like its speed so it'll be constantly moving 10 units per second uh, so translates kind of like kind of like a gas pedal in ways um, you can think of it just as pushing something um, so so this is the one where we want to like push something with uh, we're gonna choose our axis vector um for the vector variable right okay um, change the world space change the space to world right so space is currently set from self we're going to set it to world world being the xyz coordinates that everything is universally abiding by like just kind of there's one big map right this is our one big world map versus the local space so if you if you have it right here it says self self is like the local space which is saying that like if any of these objects are like you know they're they're children of something this main camera is it had these coordinates are set relative to this camera container object so this main camera if we zeroed it out it wouldn't go to world zero 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 you know it would go to the camera container zero 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 you see so that's zeroed out at its hips because that's where the camera container zero 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 is but if we drag out the camera and then you look at it it's like the position is not zero 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 anymore it's zero point three zero because it already shared those x and z values with uh the camera container so if you if you zero this out now it's on the floor now it's at true world world the world zero 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 
Um, I think that's a pretty like clear illustration of that. Um, and if you missed it, then you're helpless. Um, so I'm just gonna, there we go. That's our camera back to normal. Um, change the space to world. World means da da da, right? So we're clicking that. Uh, no player. There we go. World, right? So space is set to world down here. Um, and. Hmm. I just want to make sure that this isn't being cut off too much. Uh, where is OBS? There we go. I'm going to scooch this over just a wee bit because I have a feeling that's getting cut off big time. Mm, okay. So back to it. Um, We were on that translate bit that we just set to world. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we're getting horizontal and vertical inputs defined from our blah, blah, blah. Storing the magnitude, translate, push the, the above, get axis vector action. Uh, and you'll see what these actually blah, blah, blah. So if you ran into the end, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right. So let's see. Let's hit play. See if this isn't completely fucking broken. Um, all right. So you can move that around. Now, you can't really tell in the actual player window because we have no point of reference being in a void. Um, but over here, you can see that I'm moving the player around using WASD. So. What we could do is let's go into our hierarchy over here, right click, create 3D object, let's create a cube. Um, and then I'm just going to flatten this out. And then uh, let's see, I just want to scale it up like that. Okay. Right. And let's move it down like right there. Let's see, maybe a, just a tiny bit more, like right there. Okay, so now we have that. We can add in, I don't know, like a sphere. Where's the sphere at? Oh wait, what the fuck? Oh shit! <laughs> right. So we don't want to put <laughs> we don't want to put a sphere inside of a flattened cube because now it's flattened relative to the cube. Right. So uh, I'm actually gonna delete that sphere gonna make it out here 3 object sphere there we go normal sphere um, we're gonna put it like right here and then we'll duplicate it put it like right here duplicate it uh, I'm just hitting control D to duplicate it um, it's gonna I'm just placing them around randomly just so we have uh, points of reference um, as we move our character around so it's not like fucking confusing on your eyeballs okay all right so now if we hit play i'll even maximize on play now <clears throat> uh you should get an idea of how our character's moving right see moving around problem is he's just sliding around like a freak uh not facing anything and not playing any sort of walk animation so let's take care of that just a second. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Um. So. Da da da. We already got our camera set up with that stuff. Um. Okay. Our input axis magnitude. 
Um, okay, now we're going to put in Finish up the basic camera by going to our look forward FSM on our player. Okay. So in our player controller, the look forward FSM, gonna hit edit, bring this up. Um, get FSM. Okay. Um, So we're going to use get owner because the FSM is information for the FSM name. You can click the button to okay, player controller, the input axis magnitude, right? Okay. So for this FSM, get FSM float means that um, we're, we're trying to get a variable from a different FSM, right? Because each of these FSMs, they're kind of like their own little contained world as far as like variables go. So you could use something called a global variable, which is one that every FSM could talk to simultaneously. Like it is just, um, it is exactly what it sounds like. A global variable <laughs> means that not any one FSM like is in charge of it. It's like every FSM could edit that variable. So those get kind of sloppy and a little dangerous. <laughs> um, using them because you're kind of like oh shit where is that even like wh who's which fsm is is altering that data right now um so a lot of the time what's what's good is to kind of have one fsm that's in charge of 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 a handful of variables or at least kind of like splitting certain variables up into certain fsms like this is like a an fsm for like a health manager so you know all of your kind of variables related to health are in this health FSM um, or like, you know, the character movements, you would want to have only that FSM be responsible for like the character speed, you know, um, it'd be weird if like you kind of started mixing and matching these. Eventually you do kind of start wanting variables to influence each other, but like it's, it's a, it's a cleaner and safer way to kind of make their starting point, um, you know, their origin sort of locked down to a specific FSM. Um, so we're using this get FSM float to get the, which one is it? Input axis magnitude from that other FSM we have. So get FSM float, they're all sorts of get FSMs really quick, just to show you. Um, I don't know which part my head is cutting off, but if um, if you type in, in the actions over here, you have stuff like get FSM array, get FSM bool, color, enum, float, game object, um, let me spit out this gum. And these are all like specifically, like obviously like they are what they sound like. <laughs> um, so we're using the get FSM float because the variable we want to retrieve is a float. The game object is set to owner because the game object that has the FSM is this one that it's already on. Um, and then the FSM name, if you hit this little dot, 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 it'll give us this little list of all of our other FSMs. Um, so you can see we have the three that we have right here, player animations, look forward and player controller. The one we want is coming from, I want to, uh, da, 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 player controller, right? So, so right now we're currently in the look forward uh, FSM. We're getting information from the player controller FSM. And then if we click this, we get the options of the variables of available to us, which is our input axis magnitude. That's the one that we want right now. Um, and then you could store that in a new variable. Um, it'll, we'll just call it the same thing, right? Sometimes you do want to like, um, uh, I'll put this one as a lowercase input axis magnitude. I don't know why I capitalized it the first time. Um, so that'll be, uh, kind of you're storing you're taking the information from that variable and storing it locally here into this one um into this new variable which you can see right here so just remember these are two separate variables at this point this is kind of like the copy right um so and uh, then store value we're going to create the new input axis magnitude blah, blah blah copy and paste that data and it'll be the same thing here so we know what we're getting then in the float compare action, we're going to set float one to our newly created input axis magnitude and float two uh, to 0.05. Um, 
you're going to set float one to input axis magnitude. So you're going to hit this little equals button. So now you could choose a variable and there it is input axis magnitude. Uh, and then float two, we're just going to put this in by hand to 0.5. Um, so that 0.5 is kind of like when that axis magnitude goes above 0.5, um, it will, um, it'll do a thing, right? So we can tell it when it's equal, less than, or greater than to do a thing. Um, so the way you can look at it is that when you're hitting each one of these keys, because keys aren't pressure sensitive, they kind of have to go off of how long you hold them instead. Because you know how like in, say for example, the classic example is in Mario, <clears throat> uh, if you tap A, he does a little jump, but if you hold it, he jumps higher, right? So that's a time-based thing that says at the start of the button being down, it's going to start adding uh, to this number in really small uh, increments, right? So like at the end of a hold, it'll also put like a cap at it. Um, I believe um, the input axis magnitude, I think it said before, it's between negative one and one, right? So all the fractions in between that are what's available to it. And so when you're tapping a button, in our case, forward, right? If you tap it, it'll be some fraction of, of a number. Um, but then by the end of it, it'll be all the way at one, like a solid one. Excuse me. Um, so in other words, what we're saying right here with this float compare is that when you press W, when you press forward, it's only going to do something when you've held it just long enough, which is the halfway point for it. Because uh, it's 0.5 instead of 1. Because if you just tapped it like super quick, the camera's going to be like locking to, to something all the time. But you don't want it to be that like abrupt of a, of a change. Um, so this float compare, we're setting to 0.5. Um, uh, and let's see. Then for equal, we're going to create a new event called look forward and set the same thing for greater than, right? So if it's equal to or greater than, uh, we'll call this, um, let's see, select everything, all right, we're going to call it look forward, right, 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 duh, look forward. I just want to, I want to make sure I'm using the same language as I did before, because whenever I'm going back to this old script as reference, like if I named it something else, I'm like, wait, what the fuck are we calling it in the new one? Um, so if you see me doing that like fucking Rogan squint thing, like it's because I want to make sure I'm not going to get all confused later. So look forward uh, is the action that's going to happen or the is the event that's going to be sent when it hits that 0.5. But it's also going to be for greater than, right? Yeah, so we're going to set the same thing for greater than. Look forward. Um, just a second. My goodness. <clears throat> now, there isn't a transition here yet, so you need to add that shit. You go to, you right click on the state, and go to add transition, look forward. And now this little light gray box down here for look forward is the transition. So this transition is kind of like a launch pad, right? It's like pulling the trigger. So what you could do is you click on it and drag out, and you see this, you see this arrow coming out of it. Um, so when that float compare hits that 0.5 when it's equal or greater than it's going to send to this look forward thing which isn't it's like saying go here this arrow now do this right um just clicking and dragging doesn't do anything like it'll just kind of like show the arrow but if you click and drag out and you hold control when you let go a click it'll create a new state um so this is the place that it'll get sent to um Let's see. Mm. Just a second. I just wanted to check something. Okay. Right. Okay. We're about at the halfway point now. Um, so 
maybe a little bit past the halfway point. The last bit is going to kind of all come together in in like uh, the the player animations FSM. So hopefully we can wrap this up within the next hour. Let's see. Let's find out. Um, yeah, we're definitely past the halfway point because this script is almost up. Um, so uh, da, 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 da. now in this new state, right, we're going to want to add some shit. Um, so forward, da, 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 the, race is okay. the new state is very similar to this first one. So let's just select these actions from the first state and then copy and paste them into the second state. So I'm going to click on that first one. I'm going to grab these. By holding shift, you can collect, you could select both of them. I'm going to copy them, just hitting control C or command C if you're on a Mac. I'm going to come to the second state, click in this box to make sure that we're in here and hit control V. Oops, Jesus Christ. I don't know why I did that. It's weird. Um, there we go. Okay, so now that we've pasted those in, uh, let's just change float 2 to point 4. Okay. And instead, it's going to be from... Um, uh, da, da, da. Let's see. Right, so we want to do it um, equal or less than. So we want to get rid of this greater than, and we want to do the less than. Less than. Um, we're actually going to change these from look forward to something. Uh, we're, we're just going to call it fin. Okay. As in finished. So less than, we're going to change it to fin. So now if it's equal to or less than 0.4, it's going to send us backwards. So if you add transition, this fin one, we're going to send it back to this, right? So it's kind of like you can imagine being here, clicking and holding the button, it passing 0.5 or hitting 0.5 or passing it, right? And then it sends us here now. Now we're in the second place. Um, and we're still holding it. But then suddenly you let go. So the number starts shrinking. And it is it either hits or goes below that 0.4, which sends us back here. Um, so now in the second state, though, um, let's see, blah, 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 add finish transition, drag zero, transition back, blah, blah, blah. So basically, blah, 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 this last thing, is it. OK, so now we're going to use a smooth look at action. Smooth look at. Uh, and let's put this at the motherfucking top. Move it to the top. Um, let's see, smooth look at action. Set the target object to the character pointer and change its finish tolerance to zero. So this finish tolerance is zero, and the target object is the character pointer, which is right here. It's the child of our camera container. So I'm grabbing this and dropping it in. Um, Smooth look at does exactly what it sounds like it does. It makes a game object very smoothly turn to face something, either a game object or designated coordinates. Right. So like, uh, while it's here, it's going to do that. Uh, it's going to turn our um, our player to look at that character pointer thing, um, and uh, when it goes below that number, we're going to send it back here. Right. So that I think that's all done. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's see what happens when we press play. Okay, so I'm gonna hold forward. You see, now I'm holding forward, and wherever I, I'm only holding forward, I'm not using left or right or anything, and wherever I point the mouse is the direction that it's moving the character in. And I can look up or down, and it'll ignore. It's not going to send the character flying. It's kind of ignoring that vertical axis. It's just saying uh, the direction as far as the x and z coordinates are concerned. So it's moving this character around for whichever way I point the camera. All right, so that's all set up. Um, we have our character animations all set up already. Um, so let's make the FSM for it. Hmm. Okay, setting up these three states. 
uh, player animation. Where the fuck is my mouse? There it is. Okay. Player animations, hitting edit. Now in here, we want three states. Uh, we'll name these. I didn't do it in the original one, but this will help. So it's like, in the state one, excuse me. In this state one, we're gonna call it idle, right? And you could right click, add state, and the state two, we're gonna call it walk, add state, and we're gonna call this last one run. Okay, and I stacked them like this before. Mm. You could also just as easily stack it like this. We'll do it like this. This might make more sense. Um, so let's start on our idle. Mm. Um, 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 um. Da, da, da. In the idle state, we're going to add a move towards. Okay. And change the game object from owner to main camera. Okay. So we're going to. So in this move towards, you could use the owner, but we're changing it to specify game object. So now we could drag in and drop uh, which one it, we want to use, which is the main camera. So we're going to drag and drop that in. So now it's saying that the main camera is the thing that's gonna be moving toward whatever this target object is. Um, and we're gonna change the target object to the main camera origin. So that main camera origin, I believe, cause I think that's the one thing I, let's see, I wanna make sure that I'm using same language here but I totally did not for this one so I'm gonna look up main camera origin all right this reference point for the camera turn oh right 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 totally forgot about that <laughs> um, so we're gonna create an empty game object at the main camera location then pull it out and make it a child of the player camera game object Right, 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 right. Okay, so um, what we want to happen is when you run, the camera is gonna move toward the player, um, and then when you let go, it moves away from the player. So when it moves away from the player, we wanna tell the camera like, hey, this was your original position. We wanna have that reference point that says, go back to your original position. Your original position is this thing. So what this thing is, is um, an empty game object. So if we click on main camera with it selected, you right click on main camera, and you go create empty, and we're gonna hit F2 and call this main camera origin. And we're gonna drag it out um, because we don't want it to be a child of that. Um, but we, what we do wanna have it be a child of is uh, the camera container. So let's we could just drag it, drag and drop it in here. So now it's in the camera container. Um, so if we do click our FSM or no, our player again, in our player animations, this target object, this move towards, right? Uh, we can select the main camera origin, okay? Uh, and then the finish distance will set to zero. Um, yeah, okay. And we're putting it in this first state because you always wanna make sure that like things get reset. So this is one of the first things that happens when you're in the idle, idle position. Um, the next action is a get property action. And there's a couple ways to do this. One way is just grabbing from out of the action browser. So yeah, you can do uh, get property get pooperty, get property right here. You could drag it in and then you could drag some, any type of property like from over here um, into this target object and then it'll kind of give you options and stuff. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, which is a lot easier, um, is if you just have this, this editor window open because this is the place you want to put it. If you lock it and you want to lock it because when you start clicking on other shit over here, 
it's going to change this playmaker window. It's going to like it's going to change it to whatever object you're clicking. But we want to keep looking at this so we can drag and drop something into it. So we're hitting this lock button to just keep it here. We're saying don't fucking move. So with that locked down, you're going to click on what do we want to get the property from? Um let's see da, 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 da. Uh, oh, our main camera, right, because we want to change the focal length or the field of view. So I'm going to click on main camera. And now the main camera information at least is popping up over here in the inspector. But we still have this uh, uh, FSM from our player object. So now we can click and drag this camera component, like right here, like kind of on where the text is, kind of like on that on that part of the bar. I'm clicking and dragging and I'm letting go down here and when I let go it's gonna say get property or set property and I think what do we want to do we're doing a get property right so we're going to da, 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 da. just want to make sure pretty sure we're just getting property yeah get property uh, we're gonna set property later so we're getting the property uh, and it's saying which one do we want we could if we click this list and what we want is um, I want to make sure it's, yeah, it's field of view. And remember that it says it like it outright says field of view, not just FOV. Um, cause out of all of these properties that you could be changing, some of them might be named similarly. So you have to kind of make sure you're getting the right one here. So we want just field of view. So property up here, it's all uh, organized alphabetically field of view. Um, and it's a float property. So see this field of view? It's like these, this number over here, this is a float. We wanna store it in a new variable and we'll call this, what did I call it in that one? Like field of view or something. Um, I called it FOV underscore float, okay? So FOV underscore float. Um, storing that information to that since the run state is going to change how fast the player moves speed is changing uh, we're gonna want to make sure that whenever we're back to this idle state it it returns to the original speed multiplier which is 0.7 so here's where we add a set FSM float choosing the player controller FSM uh, and the speed multiplier variable setting it to 0.7 so we're gonna put in set FSM uh, set set float FSM float yeah here we go set FSM float um, the FSM name is player controller. The variable we want to set is the speed multiplier. And um, 0.7. We're setting it back to 0.7. So this is the default speed, right? Because what's going to happen is later on, if we go to this run state, it, we're going to have it set to a higher multiplier. So when we have a return back here, if we don't reset it to this, it's going to stay at the higher speed and he's going to have a walk animation where he's like, he's walking, but his actual speed is going to be all crazy. So we don't want that. This is our, this is our fail safe on that. Um, so we're going to put in an animator play, animator play. Um, and let's see, and here's where you have to type in the name of the animation you're trying to play, which is idle. So Again, this is kind of a matter of like resetting things because later on we're going to change it to walk or run. And if you're at either one of those states and you return to idle, we need to tell it, play that idle animation again. So I'm going to type in idle, just like I said before. Okay, hitting enter. Um, and remember, that's case sensitive and everything. It needs to be typed in exactly how it is in your animation controller, animator controller. Um, okay. And we're going to add two get key actions. The first will be for W. Um, this will be this part is where it says the result is just checking blocks, blah, 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 true or false. Okay, I'm just going to put these in because I think I. Let's see. Get key. Which one is it? Yeah, it's just get key. Um, okay, so the key that we want to put in is W. So we're going to scroll down. Not the chillest way to set up a get key menu. I don't know how else they would do it, I guess, but it is kind of lame that you have to like 
keep your mouse here and like hover until it gets right here. But there it is, W, that's what we want. And then the store result, I'm gonna put in a new variable. What did I call it in that one? Um, so before I had it like called up arrow is down. So I'm just gonna call it move forward is, uh, underscore is down. Cause W is like moving forward. And if you ever wanted to change this to up um, or you wanted to put um, a second get key so you could use W or the up arrow, um, they can both affect this, uh, this variable. So instead of being all specific, where it's like, oh, there's a W one and there's an, er uh, an arrow key one, we'll just generally call it the move forward because they're the same thing. So move forward is down. So what this is doing is it's storing a result that's, uh, that's called a bool and bools are right here, what it said, what does it say? It says store if the key is true, true or up false uh, is if the key is down true or up false so like a bool is just true or false it's one or zero um and you really want to store those thing you really want to store bools to kind of like kind of i know there's so many fucking reasons that you want to have uh bools set up um so for our case this get key thing is you want to name them based off of kind of like the true value most of the time so right here where it says store result move forward underscore is down that's like the true value like it is down that's true um but you'll see underneath right here it says false so like the the way to look at that is like okay it is down equals false what's another way of saying that it's up you're not pressing the key it is not down it's just sitting there no finger is on it right so <clears throat> So it'll put in a true value when you do press it, is down, is being pressed, you know? Um, and that's what's gonna uh, let us kind of send to other states based off of whether or not it's true you're pressing a button. So, um, let's see, we want two of them, right? Oh, we also wanna click this every frame box, so it's listening the whole time. Otherwise, when you get, when the, when the FSM gets to this state, if every frame is not ticked, then it'll run top, top to bottom that's the order of of how it goes through each of the actions it'll always start at the top of the list and it'll move through all these and if this frame is if every frame is not ticked it'll just pass right by it or stop if it's the last one or whatever it is it'll only do it once and it'll and and when i say only do it once it like that happens in like a fraction of a second you know because it's just it, like the computation of that moment or whatever is based off of like how your computer is performing so it's like a frame or like you know you know one hundredth or thousandth of a second whatever that is constituting like a, uh, a frame for your like current specs on your computer you know so it happens super quick and you don't want that because then what that means is like all right you have like one one hundredth of a second to press w uh and that's your only window no you want every frame so it's constantly checking <clears throat> Um, and then we want uh, one for, we want to get key for left shift, right? Mm. Okay, the next key will be for left shift, store that variable two and check every frame, right, right, right. Okay, so I'm adding in another one. And the key is, I'm gonna scroll down. Mm. Uh, left shift right here okay and we're storing storing that new variable um i'm gonna put that as run button is down again just so it's kind of like something that you could change later um without having to specifically say left shift uh we're gonna have every frame checked for that one too um add a bool operator which we're using in a way that says if one condition and one condition if if condition one and condition two are true then we're setting this new third condition as true okay so let's look at that what that looks like bool operator okay so right here it says bool one and bool two and they have a checkbox right so that's a, that's a true or false statement and the operation says and and, and, or, X, or, whatever. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I haven't really fucked around too much with those. You can kind of gen, 
uh, generally guess what, what those other ones mean um, and how to use them. But for our purposes, we're leaving it with and today. So what this says is like both of these things need to be true. Um, and then it'll store the, store the result if both of them are true. Then it'll store a new bool operation as true. So it's like if one is true and two and true is if one is true and two is true, then three is now true. It makes the third new boolean operation. So we're going to change these bools by hitting these little equal signs. So now we can put in variables, and it's going to be these two variables that we just created. So if move forward is down, and if run button is down, then we're going to store the result. This new one is, uh, I believe I called it like run true. Yeah, run true, fly true. Um, there we go. And I think that's also an every frame thing. So if you're holding forward and if you're holding run, then you're running. Um, but that doesn't mean anything yet. There's nothing that's actually happening because of that. It's just storing a result that says that that's true. Um, so now we can use that information that says that's true uh, to actually send it off and do stuff. Um, so bool operator, blah, 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 which will say this run true variable is true. Add a couple of bool tests. The first one we're gonna be checking is if that run true variable is true. Uh, and if it is, we're gonna send the FSM to the running state check every frame okay uh, the second bull is bull test is going to be checking if the player is pressing forward and if that's true we're going to send the fsm to the walk state okay so two bull tests first one being for the running state second one being for the walk state so let's go bull test okay gonna put in two of those uh and let's make sure that they're after that bull operator um this one's tricky. I think I'm pretty sure I wrote the script in the way where it is setting everything up in the exact order that these actions are. Um, uh, but just just kind of heads up, I'll, I'll let you know in a moment. We'll basically find out. Um, I'm almost certain, though, that um, this is fine. But just remember that if you are following along, it does matter what uh, what order these actions are being placed in like if this bull operator comes before these two bull tests you know like that's that's important because it's executing actions in a really sort of like um kind of like in a way that makes them all dependent on each other um so it could fuck everything up if like one come for, came first and that was how things were before when i was first building this i think i put one of these bool operators before the other and and it did some funky shit um i could try purposely breaking it later too to show you um so we have these two bull tests and i think what do we want the first one is going to be if that run true is variable right so first it's checking um uh run true okay it says if it's true, then we're going to send to, let's see, I want to see what, what I called that. I'm just going to call these transitions, hmm, I'm going to call it like go run. So if it's true, we're going to want this, add transition, go run, right? And we're going to click and drag. And we already have our run state set up, so I'm going to put it over here. I think the reason I did stack them, if, if you don't mind, I want to show you that this is kind of how it works. Well, maybe we'll do it descending instead. Or no, let's, let's actually do it how I had said it before, which is an upward kind of like hierarchy. So you can kind of imagine that like we're at, we start at the idle state, and then we could go up to the walk, and then even further above that, like the next step would be run. Um, and I did this just so these these lines don't start overlapping each other because like check this shit out like you know that would, that would be so it's so lame when you start getting all this uh, my friend calls it spaghetti I've heard him and a few other people call it like just making spaghetti because you start having all these like wires crossing each other totally sloppy so um, you want to be able to see where each of these things are going and if it's set up like this you have this nice bow that just kind of floats out um, and is much easier to read so what do we have we have the bull test right uh that goes to run and we're not going to set up an is false statement like we don't we don't give a shit about that 
Um, so let's see. Hey there, a faster way to select a key function in the get key. Wait, a faster way to select a key function in the get key. It's better to press the key on your keyboard to fast select the input key. Oh, no shit. Really, really, really. Okay, shadow is light. Um, I'm going to try that right now. Um, dude, that would be really crazy. Uh, so get key, if I hold this. Um, a faster way to select key in the get key. It's better to press the key on your keyboard to fast select the input. Oh, so it's selected, so. Oh, dude. Oh, can I? I see. Okay, so Shadow is Light just gave me a super awesome tip. Um, it isn't exactly the key you press, but you can type it in as if it was a search box. So I, you know, you don't you don't press left shift to show you left shift. You have to type in L E F T, or hit L a bunch of times until you get to it, right? Uh, or actually, it doesn't even look like you could type it. It looks like you just kind of have to go alphabetically, which is still better than scrolling. So um go give shadow is light a whole ton of love because um that is a game changer <laughs> uh okay yeah so we still want it to be left shift i'm keeping it there um right so um our second bull test so really quick though this first bull test we're not setting an is false um statement um because it doesn't matter if it's false but we are checking this every frame thing, so it's constantly checking. Um, the bull test, the second one, I believe, is for walking. So uh, the second bull test is gonna be checking if the player is pressing forward, and if that's true, we're gonna send to the FSM to the walk state. Right, so um, the bull variable we're checking on is move forward is down. And if that's true, we're gonna create a new event, and we're gonna call it go walk. Uh, and we're going to have every frame selected. And we're going to add the transition, go walk. And I'm going to bring it up here to walk. Um, OK, so uh, now it's really important that these two bull tests are after the bull operator, right? Remember I mentioned this? Uh, because arranging, the back, arranging that backwards can cause weird effects, like the running animation uh, continuing to play when it's not supposed to. Generally, just remember the actions are executed in a top-down order. Um, so sometimes you might have the right actions set up, but may need to arrange them in a different order to have them function how you intend. Um, add an ease float. So this is the part where we're getting to animating the, the camera um, because this is this is sort of a stylistic thing. This is kind of this is not flourish, but um, it is like it is finesse, um, stylistic, but also functionally important because you don't want something so jarring on the player's eyes. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna make it so the camera when it when like if the player's running and the camera's back here, um, and it has we have the camera move towards the player. By default, the way you set things up, it's probably going to make it so it just goes like that and it just snaps, right? Which could be really jarring. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is we're going to create a system that makes it go like smooth. So it kind of like it starts out slow, speeds up, and then slows back down as it come as it comes in. Um, <clears throat> this is called easing. It's an animation term. So um, the best way to imagine this is if you throw up an object into the into the air. Uh, what can I throw that won't fucking just completely break shit? Let me see. I have a ball. Uh, okay. So, so the way you can, uh, think of easing, uh, the animation term um is when you throw up a ball the hang time that you see you know so when you throw it up it goes and it kind of slows down up here and then it comes back down and as it comes back down it gets faster as it goes right 
Um, so that little moment at the top where you see it slow down and then it speeds back up as it comes back down, that is a good way to look at easing. So the, um, there's two terms, there's ease in and then there's ease out. So ease in is when the ball reaches the top, when it kind of goes like that last little moment that's easing into something. Um, and then easing out is it, as it comes out of that, as it goes like that. But for some fucking weird reason, uh, this is backwards in Unity. Um, and uh, it might be backwards on, like, I have a feeling that other applications do kind of like mix and match those terms. And I'm almost uh, certain that the proper way to look at it, because it's how you see it written in animation books and stuff like that, um, is the way I just described. But, but for Unity, it's actually backwards. So for Unity, um, the ease in is like when it's falling. So like it's already stopped. So ease in, it's kind of like the end point, the start of something. So it goes like, it starts at just completely not moving and then it speeds up and it like goes zoop, right? So like a ball dropping, right? It goes from static to moving. That is what Unity calls for some reason, the ease in. And the ease out is like when it reaches the top, how it slows down at the top. Um, you can look at it as kind of like if you um, rolled the ball instead, maybe, where it's like it's static, stationary, you know, and then you push it. That's the ease in because it's, I don't know, it's, again, it's fucking weird. Uh, ease in as in the in point moves out. And then as it rolls to a stop, that's the out point. You have to go into something to come out of it, maybe is a good way to remember that. So it's in and out. That's what we want to have happen to our camera. Because otherwise, it looks so janky when your shit's just snapping around and um you know you can have it move fast but add in a little bit of ease so it's just smoother so that's what we're gonna do right now um <clears throat> so this this state starts getting super packed up with stuff so already we have a ton of shit in here right so we're gonna put in um an ease float right uh Da, 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 blah 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 ease out i kind of went into this whole fucking tirade over what that is um mm, ease float da, 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 change the variable over time <laughs> okay so we're going to use this ease float to change excuse me our field of view float and set the value to 25. Okay, right, right, right. So the ease float, what we do, we're gonna change this. I was using uh, a ball to try to explain easing right now, but it's applicable to like anything that has a changing value, right? And that's why right here we have the ease float, which is an, all it is is a number changing. Um, so that like that intensity is what you wanna keep in mind, the speed of something. Um, so what we're using this ease float for is we're going to change the field of view of our camera. So that isn't all snappy too, you know, and that's why you get that cool, smooth zooming transition instead of it just popping from this and then suddenly you blink and it's like this. Um, so the from value is our field of view float. So that's saying like, okay, that's the starting point. And then we're going to change it. The two value is to 25. Now, that's already what our camera's field of view set is, but we're at the idle state. <clears throat> so you have to remember, like, again, this setup is just for um, resetting things. So this ease float here is when this field of view float gets changed at the run state, whenever you're running, when you come back to idle, this ease float is setting it back to, it's saying, hey, this is at whatever, something crazy right now. Now we're gonna transition back to 25, which is its uh, default state. So set the value to 25. These two numbers should match when the game first starts because it's basically telling the camera to reset itself. Um, and the float variable, we're gonna save it to the same variable that it started with, right? Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna save it to FOV float. So it's just changing itself, right? Um, we're saying, hey, you started with this. Now we're gonna change it to this and like, that's going to be happening in real time. You want to select this little real time button. So as let's say this is at 60, right? As it starts descending from 60 to 25 at whatever speed it's going at, um, 
it's going to be storing that in real time like in that variable i don't know how how it's can't get any easier to explain um so this time spot is where you choose how fast that happens so like if i put one it'll take one second to go from whatever that field of view float value is to 25. it doesn't matter if it was a hundred or a thousand or a million it's always set to one second right here so it'll take one second to make that transition um but we want it to uh change at 0.5 because i guess through all of my experimentation half a second seemed to work the best uh, that's how long the animation takes. Then the ease type is going to be um, this one, I believe. Is it ease in and out? E or it's just ease out quad, right? Okay, so ease out quad. Now, if you look at all these, um, these the ones that say quad right here, these are sort of like the lowest default settings that they have for, <clears throat> for easing. Um, and then they go up uh, in intensity where they have uh, cubic, quart, quint, sine, um, expo and where are the oh yeah here we go so at the at the bottom you get kind of like stylized ones where it's not just growing in intensity anymore but actually changes the um that like that graph pattern that that can like that affects the easing so this punch one i think will like literally overextend um the value that you're trying to get to um kind of like it's bouncing or this bounce one will do the same thing spring you see how these are all kind of like about overextending and then coming back it says spring bounce elastic punch and that's kind of like you know when you drop a ball can't fucking bounce a ball on a hand uh but you know like when it you know like that you know um those kind of resemble that or even kind of if you imagine uh the ball being on like a rubber band and if i pulled it back and let go it kind of does this you know until it kind of settles in the center um, those are all forms of easing. We want the smallest one, uh, which is ease out quad. Um, we want it to be an ease out. So, um, uh, da, da, da. okay, we're using real time. Yep. Um, and real time, by the way, means it's using actual seconds uh instead of i believe it's something along the lines again of like however fast your computer can run that shit. uh and then like i don't even know what the time variable even means maybe it's like frames or something um but it's not actual seconds until you click that real time uh box uh, which is crazy because basically you could be on like a super fast computer and the experience is totally different than if you were on like a slower computer like the timing of something which you don't want you want the you know, imagine playing Street Fighter and like fucking the controls are different from when you play at your friend's house versus like your house or something, you know? Um, <clears throat> so, da, 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 how, that's how long the animation takes, blah, 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 check real time. Lastly, we're using a set property. You can set up just like the get property. Um, remember, just drag and drop, but now we're choosing set property instead. Uh, property we want to set is field of view again and now the value that we're using is uh, field of view float and check every frame mm. so the field of view number is going to be animated by the ease float right okay <clears throat> so we're gonna drag this camera in and let go down here make it make sure it's past this bottom line uh, because uh, it'll get put above it if not um, and instead of get property, we want a set property this time. And the property we want is the field of view. And the set value, instead of setting a number, this time we're going to set it to field of view float. So now this ease is going to be animating that number. And this set property is going to be setting it to that animated number. So as that number grows or shrinks, we're going to see it reflected actually being set in the camera. So you can watch it actually change. <clears throat> um okay 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 <laughs> didn't mean to say it like that i meant okay 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 uh <laughs> i'm very sorry i'm very sorry uh fucking black lives matter yo uh if you don't believe in that get the hell out of my stream i don't care if you unfollow me <clears throat> i only like human beings uh 
my enemies are human beings too. I shouldn't I shouldn't dehumanize uh, people I disagree with. But 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 you're an asshole if 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 not, man. Like, come on. Um, uh, back to the tutorial. I'm setting this to every frame. <clears throat> um, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Now into the walking state. Right. Okay. So we're going up here. Almost done, folks. Um, mm, okay. Yeah. Nice. We're making good time. Um, I wanted to get this done in under four hours. We should be done at least with all this running and walking and camera stuff within the next half hour or so. Um, and then after that, setting up the particles is pretty straightforward too. Like, depends on how in depth I, I, I go like explaining how all the shit works, you know? Um, so walk is, sorry, kind of like, Got a little lost on my windows right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here we go. First, we need the same exact move towards as the idle state, as well as that SF FSM, set FSM float, so you can copy and paste those. Um, OK, move towards and set F FSM float. This one and this one. We're going to copy, come in here, paste, OK. Then an animator play, which will be set to walk or whatever you called your animation. So we're gonna do animator play, and we're gonna call this walk, right? Um, uh, then a get key for left shift, which will store its result in the run true bool. Okay, I think we can honestly just copy and paste that too, right? Copy, paste. Um, <clears throat> mm. But for this one, so we're copying and pasting this one, but it's not going to be run button is down. We're going to just straight up set it to run true. Um, because we're not check, we're, we're not going to be using that bool operator that checks if both of these things uh, are true first. Um, because if you're already at walk, you only need to now press shift to make it so you're running. So we can kind of skip a step. So that's why we went from uh, run button is down to just straight up run true. Run true, be true, fly true. Uh, live, love, love, laugh, play. Fuck. Get buck. Um, follow that with a bull test for run true, um, which will send the event to the run state so we're gonna go and put in a bool test and the bool variable we want is run true and if it's true we're gonna go run right click transition go run and gonna send it up to here to run okay uh, and we're gonna be checking every frame on that one <clears throat> um, now we're getting a key up which checks uh, when the key is up, as in not pressed. So if the player lets go of the key, it sends it back to the idle state. Um, so I like using a transition called send back for many things, since you often find yourself sending back to prior states. Uh, I know it sounds really xenophobic um, to, to type in send back like that. Let's put in a get key up, right? So we're gonna put this down here though. And the key we want is, um, I believe, for for W, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, because we're only in walk. So I could press W. Man, shadow is light. That like that moment I had right now where all I had to do was hit W, like, mwah, thank you. Um, send result, uh, we're gonna type in a new event and we're gonna call it uh, send back, okay? Back to where you came from. Um, we're gonna add the transition, send back, right? And we're gonna send it down here. Um, so that basically just says, hey, if you let go of the forward key, then 
you're not fucking moving, so go back here, right? Now, uh, we're gonna add a couple of bool flips, uh, which just switch the selected bool variables to the opposite value of what they're currently at. Uh, in our case, we're using it to flip the up arrow is down and left shift is down, so the move forward button and the run button. We just wanna switch those to the opposite of whatever they were when we get here. Um, we have these bool flips as a sort of reset coming from other states. So bool flip, bool flip, I call bool flip. Um, so we're gonna have it for just the keys, I believe. That's right. So move forward and run button, right? So if, if it comes here, it switches them back because otherwise they're just gonna be stuck that way. Um, and we need to, to make sure that like they can turn off so you can do other things. Uh, let's see. Okay, mm then you can copy and paste those ease float and set property actions at the end of the last state. Remember, whenever the player is not running, we need to reset the camera position. So that ease float and set property from here does the same exact shit in our walk state because uh, camera doesn't get changed there. So we're going to go ease float and set property, holding shift again to, to select both of them. Control C or command C just to copy uh, and then clicking down here, you're going to press control V and just plop them in there. Um, okay, now we're at the running state. Uh, first throw in an activate game object. Okay. Okay. So this activate game object, this is going to be for the, um, the particles. Um, so I'm actually just going to turn this off for now. This little check box. Uh, this is really helpful when you're problem solving shit, by the way, just a quick little tip on the side is that like when, when you're building something and then you kind of like make one little adjustment or something, a lot of the time you can just kind of turn some things on or off to see which action is fucking everything up and this is how you do it you just click this little check check box um you'll sort of intuitively start learning how to um how to try using that um so first we're an activate game object we'll come back to this but first add in some more actions like an sf oh, fuck i always blah, blah, blah set fsm float say it with me set fsm float for the fsm player controller okay um for the speed multiplier variable which we'll set to eight so we're gonna throw that in set fsm float right um and it's gonna be for the player controller and it's going to be for the speed multiplier right so this is the part where we say like Gotta go fast, just gotta go fast. Um, we're gonna set it to eight. Mm, you can crank that up or down, however you like to party. Uh, then an animator play. <coughs> Christ. Uh, I'm not used to like fucking running my mouth this early in the morning. Uh, spin drift. <laughs> Sponsor me. Mm. <clears throat> Probably not the best thing to be drinking too, with all that acid the, the, of the of the lemon. I should be drinking just normal ass water. Um, okay, so we set that FSM float. Mm, okay, then we want an animator play to whatever the name of our run state is. <clears throat> okay, putting this down at the bottom. Uh, run. Okay. And then a get key up for W, which will send us back to, let's see, get key up, right? W, send event, thank you, shadows light. Um, we're gonna send this to, 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 to send the event stop. So we kind of want it to do um, go idle, go idle, go stop. And we're gonna add a transition go stop, send it back here to the idle, right? Billy idle. After the get key up, 
Uh, this sends us back to the idle state, then get a key up for left ship, which sends us back to the locking state, right? So we're gonna copy and paste that, and we're gonna do left shift, right? And it's gonna go back to go walk, right? Mm. So we're gonna add transition, go walk, and we're gonna send it back down here. So it makes sense. Is everybody getting this? Right, you when you let go of W, get key up, as in the key is up. Uh, it's gonna go to stopped, right? Because W is your forward key, sending you to idle. Uh, if you let go of left shift, you're not running anymore, but you're at least walking, so it just sends you to walk. Okay, so uh, then you can copy and paste those bool flips that reset these walk and run bools. So let's go to walk, and we're gonna grab these two bool flips. Okay copying them, coming over here, pasting them. Uh, then copy and paste that ease float and set property, except we're gonna change some things. So we're gonna go over here, <coughs> ease float and set property, gonna copy them, okay? Gonna paste them. But now we're gonna change that two value to something much higher, like 69. So the two value, 69, nice. Uh, and the time to one second, even nicer. And then the ease type to ease in out quad. So this one does both an ease in and an out. So it does it at the start and the end of the move. Uh, lastly, add, oh, also, okay, it is set in real time. Okay, that's all correct, that's all correct. Uh, last, add a move towards and set the game object as, uh, let's see. Let's just throw it in, okay? Uh, the game object is going to be the main camera, so we can um, grab our main camera, drop it in there. That's the game object. The target object is gonna be um, the camera controller, right? Okay, um, and then the max speed is going to be 10, right? Okay, and the finish distance is gonna be three. So this finish distance is going to be <clears throat> how close the camera moves up to your player. Um, so again, this is one of those ones that you are gonna to wanna to change. This one and also the uh, that ease float up there. Um, I believe, yeah, so, so that ease float right here this changing of the value to 69, that is the new field of view, right? Obviously, it's setting your, it's changing your field of view. I set that one based off of the scale of my, um, of my character model, and not only just the scale of my character model, but where, um, where I eventually move the camera. So these two things work together. Like you kind of have to, you do have to independently check which one of these, um, or this ease float and these and this move towards you have to see how they work together for your personal setup so for mine these are the numbers i use um but just remember this ease float what you're changing here is the field of view that's how wide or narrow the camera is getting um and then this move towards this uh finish distance is how close like if this was your player how close the camera gets to your player so yeah that's just that's all dependent on you um but just Remember, what we're trying to do here is your camera is far back and with its more narrow point of view, or it's, I'm sorry, narrow field of view. And then when you run, it moves closer to your player, but it becomes wider in its field of view. That's what we're trying to do. And then uh, vice versa, when it's when it sends back, when it sends it backwards, or not vice versa, but when it does get sent back, it should return to being further away and now a more narrow field of view and narrow field of view being a smaller number and wider field of view being a higher number um so now that we have that move towards setup finish distance to three um adjust that finish distance to your liking okay uh right so so now this should be let's see i don't believe I think we can honestly play it. So maximize on play, let's see. 
So, uh, so we can hold W. Um, and don't worry, we'll get to the animation stuff right now. But right now we can hold W and walk around. And if we press shift, it runs, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I think what we need to do though is make sure that our, our character is also rotating with the camera because right now the character is not. Um, but you'll see how, you see how the camera is changing. So our camera works. Right, but here's another one of those cases where when I let go of shift right now, it's still just running, right? So we need to, we need to address those things. Uh, let's see. Okay. So um, what we need to do first is unclick maximize on play. And now here's where you kind of get to learn about like debugging by watching your FSMs. Um, so we can unlock this, <clears throat> click on the player, and then go to, for example, um, player animations, right? This is one that we want to look at. Um, and if you just have this selected, you can watch all of this happen in real time as you play. So I'm gonna hit play. So when I hit W, you'll see that those green arrows show which part it got sent from, <laughs> excuse me, um, and which state it arrives at. So you can see it goes back and forth. We're at idle, but it goes up to walk when I hit W. And if I hit shift, it goes to running. Okay, so the problem, what was it, that if I hold shift and then let go of shift, but I'm still holding W, it's still, it's only doing uh, the run animation. <laughs> um, so trying to kind of debug that, like I get to stay, or I have to stay here. So it's, I'm in the walk state, but my character is still running. So I have to ask myself, like, why is that? Because obviously down there it says, uh, that walk it should have pressed the walk thing right so what i'll do is i'll move that animator play to the top just to make sure that it's like the first thing that happens so i'm gonna take this animator play move it to the top and i'm gonna hit play and now let's see if that changes anything okay so i'm walking running and if i let go of shift now it still does it so that's like that's troublesome oh wait hold up Hmm, even more troubling is like, why? Oh, I'm sorry, I changed the, the animator play in the um, in my idle state. We can leave that there, it doesn't matter. Uh, for this, but we wanna change it in my walk state. Okay, so now let's try that. Okay, walking forward, running, and then letting go of run. All right, it's still doing that. So that is still troubling. Um, what we could do is try doing the every frame thing. I have kind of have a bad feeling about that one. Um, I, oops, and I accidentally checked that one. Walk, layer, normalize time. Okay, I'm just gonna, let's just try it. I, I think the problem with having every frame ticked though is that it will Well, it doesn't even work on that. That's really fucking strange because is there another animator play in here that is playing? Hmm. So it should be that when we come back here, it just plays the walk animation. Does it even play it when we, it does, right? When we just move forward. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, yo, hang on. Let's look at our player animator controller. Ah, you see? Didn't even heed my own advice. It's not walk, it's walking with bag. So let's just change this. Uh, let's see, we can, um, I'm gonna rename it. And I'm just gonna call it walk. Okay, and then walk. 
Boom. Now let's go back to our thing and hit play. Okay, so there we go. So there's our walk animation. If we run and then let go, our walk animation comes back. Okay, problem solved. See, tiny things like that. You gotta remember like to capitalize shit or name things exactly how it was. Um, so what is the problem now? Our player is not facing in the direction. So this look forward thing basically isn't working, right? Um, keep vertical, finish tolerance is zero. Um, use owner. I'm gonna just take a look at look forward. Um, get FSM float. It's the input axis magnitude. Oh, I think these are supposed to be for every frame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think the problem here is that, right, we need to, I'm almost certain that these need to be checking every frame. That would make sense because they're only running once and then it's like useless after that. And we want to do the same thing over here where we're clicking every frame. So now let's see if the character faces the direction. There you go, see? Okay, so the, f the player now faces the direction of the camera. All right, you got a couple of nice little, you know, beginner nutshell sized uh, uh, um, debugging. So now you can kind of learn how to like fix some problems by actually looking at your um, editor while you're playing the game. Um, and yeah, so this is all set up. You can let go of walk. If I do that, it just stops. So all the controls should work for you now. If you follow, followed along to a T, if you did everything right and you didn't totally fuck up, I believe in you. You probably did it right. You're probably just, you're probably, it's probably better than mine. Um, but the thing that we can do is uh, add those particles, right? 235. Oh, goody. We are ahead of schedule. Um, so uh what we'll do is go to our player i just want to make sure that i am not missing anything with that All right now we're going to add a particle system to the player so blah 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 go to effects particle system rotate okay blah 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 so this one i'm going to kind of free ball this one because i kind of don't remember the exact settings i set up but all you do basically is uh, right click on your player and then you're going to go to effects and you're going to create particle system and you can get a little preview of your particle system right here. Now these particles are fucking massive and we do not want this like shit show. So um, we're gonna make a different shit show because <laughs> we're gonna be using the default uh, particles anyway. This is something that you can, you know, go into Photoshop, like draw a line however you like. You can even use a cool fancy brush uh, change the colors and all that kind of crazy shit for, um, and then import the image. Uh, that image would go if you if you click on your particle system, you can see it in the inspector over here. Um, it would be, I believe, under the render. Yeah, where it says material particles lit. Um, so, I believe that that is yeah, that one right there. You could see it right here. Um, you can change that if you wanted to. Um, so you would just import the image, put it on a material, and then choose that material here, which I think you could literally just press this button, right? <clears throat> and it would, it would just be in here, whatever your uh, textures are. So we're just gonna be using this one for the default. Um, this is your particle effect, like kind of uh, preview simulator, simulator controls stuff. Uh, you could pause it, play it, restart it, stop it, bop it, twist it, pop it. And the, sh the show bound stuff, uh, that kind of shows you like where in space they are. You see that huge cube? Um, and then show only selected. Actually, what does that say? Uh, hide all unselected particle systems and current. Right, just in case that there's other particle systems. But this default settings are all we need to kind of tweak the settings over here and get what we want. Um, so 
what we want is, um, let's see, scaling mode, shape, no, local. There is uh, a parameter in here that will let you, um, I think maybe it could even be this. Yeah, there we go. You see how I'm scaling up this Y parameter and it's making them longer upwards. Um, we want it in the Z parameter. You see this little, this little guy up here. Oops, hold on me. Like, you see this thing up here. This tells you, oh, this is your X axis. This is your Z axis, and this is your Y axis. The particles are flying that way. Um, so what we want to do actually is rotate them. So you can get your rotate tool, rotate it around, holding Control. You can be snapping, uh, and you'll see that that's just negative 180, right? Um, so now they're all going behind the player. And it's still on the z-axis that we want to stretch them. Um, oops. Scale on the z-axis. So now they're getting all long. Or actually, I don't know if it was, maybe I didn't do it on here. I think there is really a parameter in here, the shape. Right. Uh, Radius, thickness, arc, spread. Um, I think it could be in the scale. Let's see. So that way it's just. Oh, no, no, no. Because that's the. Uh, about the emission. Mm, color over lifetime, size over lifetime. Separate axes. No, I didn't use that. Um, Hmm. You know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fucking pop on over to uh, the scene where I actually finished this, and you guys can just copy and paste exactly what I did last time, uh, and then I'll show you in in the scene how to uh, let's see, save <clears throat> how to how to implement it in Playmaker. <clears throat> so player. Uh, particle system. I have it deactivated right now. And the way you see how it's like grayed out, if you click it over here, this box is not checked. That means it's deactivated. If you click it on, it'll turn it on. Uh, so I'm just going to have it playing. I'm going to center up on it. Um, okay. So you see how they're all stretched out and they're just like lines right now? Uh, let's see if we can find where that got changed shape emission so these are all the parameters that i fucked with renderer length scale oh dummy it was right here it was in length scale so i just changed that to 10 right so if you see i shrink that down they turn back to like little circles but i had it changed to 10 so they're nice and long um and then what i did was i changed this this shape part the radius to four and the radius thickness to one. So that means it's kind of like, it's more of a cylinder now, because I don't think if you look in here, there's not a cylinder option. So you need to just change it. So uh, this cone is basically a cylinder. Um, so what you could do is, I think I could even kind of do one of these. Um, I'm gonna change these magnifier views lens yeah so you can kind of look at some of this if you can get a better view um let's see let's change this to 200 percent. there you go right so the particle system right here the duration is five and it's looping um the start lifetime is 0.5 start speed is 10 Start size is one. Uh, simulation speed is in world. It's going at one. Um, scaling mode is local. It plays on awake. Uh, the emitter velocity, blah, blah, blah. Max particles is 1,000. K, 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 K. Fuck, I gotta, I gotta say OK, OK, OK. Or cool, cool, cool. Or can't say K, K, K. Jesus, so I, I hate that. They ruined, they ruined like, uh, they just ruined it. 
they ruined a lot of things. I shouldn't be complaining. Listen to me. Jesus, I'm sorry. Um, okay, emission. So this one, rate over time is 10, rate over distance, zero. Uh, the shape of it, uh, it's a cone, like I said. The angle is zero. The radius is four. The radius thickness is one. Arc is 360. Um, it emits from the base. Okay, and then in the inherent, veloc inherent velocity, initial and zero. Uh, and the renderer is stretched billboard. It's saying stretched billboard because it's a billboard, but we stretched out that length scale. Um, and it's using that original particles. Uh, minimum particle size zero, max particle size 0.5. And um, cast shadows is off. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, let's see, I'm gonna close that. Um, like that, that should be decent. Um, let me make sure that that's showing up. Okay, um, and yeah, I mean like, once that's set up, you know, with especially kind of like where it is in accordance to your player, you know, all you have to do is kind of like use your rotate tool to kind of move it around and uh, set it up to however it fits your camera, especially if you're using a different, like uh, if, your own, if you're using your own custom image. Um, so what I want to show you now is how you're supposed to use it in Playmaker. Um, so with the player, um, if we go to uh, da, 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 player animations, excuse me, in the running section, it says activate game object. Remember we put that in here? So you're going to drag and drop that particle system into here. And you're saying activate, right? That little box is checked. Um, and reset on exit it's very important that you have this reset on exit because it's like when you're when you stop running it'll deactivate it um and so that's pretty much it you, you after that you just go up to your particle system and you uncheck this little box so by default it's not activated it's not on um and then just every time you run it will get turned on and then when you leave that state it has that little reset on exit button and it turns off resets on exit uh, the end and so in the end, um, you get your little guy, your little person, your little uh, chubby player character. Let's see, he walks around. Oh shit, am I, here, let me, uh, let's actually just go to, a, <laughs> I'm gonna copy this particle system, copy, and I'm gonna go back to our scene the live stream toot, don't save. Um, and then in the player, I'm gonna paste it, I'm gonna put it in the player, and I'm gonna zero it out, right? So that means it's like at the zero point of our player. Uh, I'll move it up and I'll actually turn it on just to, so we can make sure that it's like being affected in the right way. So it looks like we want to move it up and forward a little bit. More. Maybe I should scale it. There we go. Yeah. So you just kind of have to adjust it. Um, like I said, all of the the adjustments like are, are very personal depending on like you know which assets you're using um so i have those lines now and um i'm going to turn it off i'm going to go into our player go into player animations go into run i'm going to turn this activate game object back on click reset on exit specify the game object Drag in this particle system, saving it, um, and then we'll hit play. 
We'll see how this works. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you on? Oh, I think that's our other. We have that other one, right? Stupid. Uh, this particle system we have to delete. That's our old one. Okay. Now let's play it. <clears throat> okay. So no particles, just standing there, walking. Okay. Moves with it. Press shift. Now we got the lines. And you know, these lines I copied and pasted from the other project. So again, like it's really, I just have, and I changed also kind of like the camera placement and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, um, you know what I realized too, what, what's kind of important here, uh, that would make a fucking huge difference is this part, the move towards this needs to be set to player. That's a big thing. Okay. It's close. All right. And why isn't it getting set to that? It's weird. In run, game object moves to player. Maybe we could change it to um, camera pivot. Let's try that. That is strange. Um, main camera. Oh, you know what? The finish distance probably can make a difference. Change it to one, maybe? There we go. Yeah, I just needed to change the finish distance. Um, so yeah, sorry if I if, if it's a little confusing uh, changing these numbers here and there, but like I said, it's just it's so dependent on whatever your project is, and and some of these assets that I'm using, like I'm, I tried using the same ones um, again, but I might have done some like scaling and stuff in uh, in that last project when I was first building it, um, but yeah, here's here's pretty much that system. So it zooms into the player, um, zooms back out, uh, and you just change those settings to like whatever just feels good to you because uh it really is just like i said a stylistic thing um it helps you can argue that it helps functionally so the so the players aren't getting like fatigued with like sloppy visuals but um it really is just like a personal preference thing so i think that's it um what time is it 250 got an hour and 10 minutes to spare uh hopefully that was Hopefully you're able to learn plenty from that. I really tried breaking it down to be like as um, as sort of like newbie beginner as possible. Um, so um, really just let me know how you felt about this. If this is a format that you dig, um, you know, if you want less or more of the specifics, you know, personally, as, as I was going through this, I'm kind of like, I realize that people who've never touched this are probably you know, I can imagine this being cool for people who have never touched it. Um, but man, fucking, yeah, I was, I was really putting out, like, I was going to be able to do for like, uh, four hours or so. I was like hoping that like, I'd be able to do it in less. Thankfully I did. Um, but even, you know, even three hours, like, is just so long to do something that's like pretty straightforward. Um, and like, you know, this is something that if I would have made into an edited video could have been cut down a lot, could have been really precise. Um, but but i also don't think like you know you, as a beginner if you're a beginner watching this that you would have gotten nearly as much of the information because so much of it is about like kind of explaining all of that nitty-gritty stuff you know telling you what each of these concepts are you know the fact that i busted out a fucking ball during this you know that's kind of like that's when this turns into like a lesson like a proper class instead of um just a quick tutorial even though this was under three hours yeah so glad it was under three hours um but i'm starving and i need to eat uh the last few bites of my sandwich and um yeah so just let me know where where you are in your game development journey as far as like your your personal skill set if you think you're a beginner or intermediate or advanced kind of like on a, maybe give me a scale of one to ten where you think you're at uh 10 being like 
why are you even watching my channel? <laughs> um, one being like, uh, uh, yeah, like what's Unity? Um, so uh, let me know that if, if, if you feel comfortable, but, but more importantly, kind of if you want more or less of this nitty gritty stuff, because that's kind of what I want to know. Like, is there anybody that's benefiting from this? Um, or is, is more of the audience right now or more of you people who could have done without like, oh, and did you know that you can hit enter to put the action into the box, you know? Um, Cause I could probably get through more of these and hopefully be a lot more helpful um, in, in more advanced ways. Um, if that's who you are. I don't know who you are. Tell me who you are. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, let me know how you feel about everything in the comments um, and generally what else you're looking for and what feature you want next. Uh, I have some people that have made some interesting suggestions for features, um, but I haven't started yet. So, so definitely let me know uh, if you want this character to fly, uh, if you want it to dig, if you want to be able to flush toilets. That's like a classic video game staple. It's like you got to have a flushable toilet. Uh, um... I don't know. It's up to you guys. All right. Thanks for watching.